Hello again, witches, seekers, and friends, and welcome to the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast, the show where we do a little ranting, raving, and wand waving. I'm your host, Paige Vanderbeck, and together we're going to explore magic and spirituality, social justice, the psychic realm, and truly modern witchcraft. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for agreeing to be on the show and everything. Oh my God. I'm, I'm super so psyched. honored, Paige. Your magic is so special, so potent, so unique and joyous. I'm just so happy to be here with you, like truly. I'm so happy to have you here. I uh such a huge fan of all your work and I'm loving I'm loving goddess energy. I'm loving this new book. Thank um you. It's so great. It, it's got a little bit of everything that someone mm -hmm. needs to understand. Mm -hmm. um, goddess worship, goddess practice, different goddesses. It's just, it's a really great overview of how to actually work with a goddess. Mm, thank you. And this is especially, I think this is especially, I've been looking for a book like this for a while because I'm someone mm -hmm. who's always had a more secular type practice. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really, I didn't really want to think of the gods and goddesses as, as real for whatever yeah. reason. I understand. Um, yeah. So I, it was hard to find a way to connect with goddess energy yeah. without that but I, I feel like your book kind of opens that up. So Aww. how can people with more of a, a secular practice like connect with this goddess energy on a regular yeah. basis? Well, for me, like I really believe that goddess energy is that it's an energy. It's a frequency. It's not so much something outside of ourselves, but it's like we get to tune ourselves. Like if our body is, you know, like a radio, like we get to tune ourselves to that frequency because everything is energy, everything is vibration. So like if we cultivate enough awareness around like what goddess energy is to us and what it feels like to us, it's going to be easier to access. And like, I think kind of thinking about goddess energy as something existing within us already kind of takes it out of like something outside of ourselves that we have to really figure out. And my book obviously talks about different goddesses from different myth, like different traditions and different cultures around the world, not because I believe in appropriation, but because I believe that these goddesses are reflections of ourselves, embodiments of ourselves and archetypal energies that are like alive in their own right. And that almost every culture has kind of their own expression around this and that they're all like obviously incredibly unique, but there is a lot of um, like they, you know, adopt from another and one another. There's a word I'm forgetting. It's not synchronous, but something like that. Um, they so inspire for, each other. I think people, yeah. I think all different cultures inspire other cultures and definitely we're all people. And so it just, there's bound to be overlap there. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like with colonization or even just like cultures moving into other people and to other places like you'll see like the greek and the roman and like the sumerian and like all these kind of different cultures like adopting and it's like called like synch syncretize like i don't i'm so i'm i'm really blanking on the word it. syncretize i don't know but you know what i'm talking I think about that where, might like, be the, the word yeah different gods and goddesses are kind of adult adopted into the different cultures as a way to like have those people kind of like understand it like you'll even see it yeah. like in catholic churches that like were built on old pagan sites or that have like pagan gods and goddesses like in mexico in the churches you'll still see like aztec gods or like different kind of like mexica gods um like in the, the catholic churches and stuff so it's just it's a whole thing but what I was going to say is like if you're secular like for me you don't have to it might be easier to worship the goddess as a vibration that makes up part of the universe right like there's this masculine and feminine energy from being very reductionary that's kind of like <laughs> active and intuitive like obviously that's like very you know basic but like to me goddess energy is artistic expressive sexual it's felt it's embodied it's not something you can think your way towards and it's a way that we move through the world when we're open with our hearts, when we're connecting with somebody, when we're creating, when we're dancing, when we're having sex or making love, when we're singing, like goddess energy is a way of us being in this space that like capitalism and the patriarchy don't really want us to be in. And it's yeah. also an expression that is alive that we can worship as archetypal, 
you know, energy. So like maybe you don't want to worship Venus, but like you love working with the moon and you like the moon as an aspect of like cycles that you can work with and align with your own cycles. And like, that's the way that you work with goddess energy or you work with goddess energy through like the queens of the tarot or you work with goddess energy through like women in your life or like women that inspire you like Dolly Parton or Maya Angelou or Madonna. Like it is an expression that lives in anybody of any gender. Um, it is not just like women. Like I think, you know, like in the book I talk about gods like Hermes Trismegistus and I talk about people like Prince um, who kind of like, I, maybe Prince is um, sacred sex. I don't think I talk about him in goddess energy, <laughs> but he is. You, you did know, like, mention him a lot in sacred sex. I remember yes. that. So like he is kind of like does have that energy. So like it's not just something that's limited to like women. It's not something that's dictated by biology at all. Like It's a frequency within us. And I think that like that could be a, a way for people to start working with that energy in a way that feels like maybe a little bit more numinous and less like black and white. Sorry, yeah. that was a long rant. So I hope I answered your question. <laughs> no, you did. That's that's really it. I um I liked that about the book is that you a lot of times I mean there there are sections when you're talking about specific goddesses, but all the way through you refer to it as the goddess or just, you know, goddess energy. And I was like, this is like that's an idea I can really mm. I, I can really, you know, hold in myself. That's that's mm. something I can definitely relate to a little bit more. Thank you, Paige. Yeah, uh, I felt I, like oh sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, I feel like there's like a lot of like especially like on TikTok, which I'm really barely on. I just can't, my brain can't <laughs> handle it. I'm just like there's just too much. I'll be on there forever. Much. I don't have the time. I don't really like want to create content that way. And it just like I already have to limit my social media use because my mental health, it just a lot. But yeah. like I see like on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, it's like divine feminine energy. You're like the divine feminine, and it's like so reductionary and it's just like all it's kind of like be a bad bitch divine feminine energy and like as a bad bitch and as somebody who loves the divine feminine I'm still just like it 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 feels exclusive and like yeah. I'm like I am a straight woman but like I'm so like I love the queer community and like that is such an important part of like how I share my magic that like I don't want somebody who's non-binary or somebody who's trans or somebody who's like gender fluid or somebody who's like a gay man to like feel like they can't honor goddess energy or that they don't embody it, you know? So like it's yeah. really important for me to not just be like the divine feminine equals woman and like especially the fucking masculine polarity, feminine polarity bullshit that like I just I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. So Thank you for it gets saying really that. For weird. Yeah, it gets really weird and like oh, weird. separated. Like it's it's very, yeah. it, it just separates a lot of things that I, I don't think need to be separate. I think that's a great way of putting it. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Like it, it feels like bits and pieces. Like you're, yeah. you're taking out important parts of something here. Yeah, right. And it's like, I feel like the masculine, the feminine, it's like the masculine is like the riverbed and the feminine is like the water that flows and like they need each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, and there's like places where those two things come together and they flow together and they change. And like, I think like, obviously that's also an oversimplification, but like, yeah, I just, I totally agree with what you're saying. Like they're both, it's both and not either or. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's both. And they, they are, it's all, it's all together. You know, um, oh. I did an interview recently and, and this girl, she said something so great. She said, um, women and, and witches, they understand power as power mm. with yeah and you know in my head i finished that with it, as opposed to power over over exactly and i think exactly. um i think a little bit some of that kind of reductionist um divine feminine is is focusing more on power over versus power yeah, with. right like the only people we have power over are like ourselves and yeah. i don't even think that's a good way of looking at ourselves i think it's being in alignment with our power and choosing to handle it and move it and flow with it and honor it and yeah, I really, really love that and totally agree. Yeah, that um, that that little line has just been like stuck in my head, like power with. Like I love this. Mm -hmm. I love I love this idea. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I thought about it a lot. I thought about it a lot when I was reading your book, but especially this chapter on the dark goddess, mm. which is like a, a topic I'm exploring a lot this year specifically. Yeah. 
And um, that, that's the chapter when I was going through, I'm like, oh, I want to write that down. I want to write that down. And next thing I know, I have almost the whole chapter written out. And I'm like, oh my goodness. That's such a compliment, especially coming from you. Oh my God. You're like, I really, really, really admire your like research and like how, like how deep you go into that. So I'm really honored that you resonated with any of my work, but yeah, the chapter is one of my favorites as well. So yeah, it's a, uh... It really like it it blew my mind. There's <laughs> it blew my mind. There were so many parts that I was like, you know, I had a little bit of I had some tears. Like I just, Aww. you know, I went through so many things that yeah. there's a reason I'm I'm exploring the dark goddess a little bit more yeah. lately. Yeah. I understand. Um But there's these parts where, you know, through working with the dark goddess, there's this there's this kind of alleviation of shame that yeah we are all sometimes I think Christians say it really well where it's like you know we're we're made in in God's image like we're yeah. made in the goddess's image the goddess yeah. is us and we are the goddess yeah. it's so if we have all of these these dark scary parts she has those too yeah. those are not those are not separate that is not a failure yeah. a, like a human failure that's something yeah. from the goddess um but of course dark goddesses are there's something that scares people they're you know death and necromancy and um you know uh, unchecked uninhibited you know things where you're losing control mm -hmm. how can working with something like a, a dark goddess how can that help you like be more present and more whole in your life yeah i love this question and i'm i'm so honored this chapter touched you like I feel like the dark goddess gives us permission to be our whole selves. And when I say our whole selves, I mean our shadow, our light, everything in between, completely sacred. Like the dark goddess asks us to step into non-duality, in, in my opinion. Like she asks us to not see any one thing as good or bad, but to see everything as divine. Um, and not that that doesn't mean that you're ex I'm excusing rapists or racists or murderers. Right. That just means that everybody has divine within them. And this is actually something my dad, my mom and my dad would tell me like about people that were like, quote unquote, like bad people or pe not even like people that committed crimes or people that had committed acts of violence. Um, and this is something I actually forgot until right now. But like my parents would always say my dad is a rabbi. My mom is just very spiritual. And they were like, people who do, do those things aren't like necessarily like evil or bad people. They just forgot they had God in their hearts. And like, I kind of feel the same way about the dark goddess. It's like, we all have, we are all love. And like the dark goddess doesn't, ex it's not that she's excusing us to go and do whatever we want. But like, she shows us that our shame our sexuality our rage our sadness um even like our trauma like these are all parts of us that are like not that our trauma is sacred but like that the, that no matter what we go through and no matter our feelings or no matter what we've done in the past that like that is okay and that like we are divine because the dark goddess is like a goddess of the shadows she is a goddess who brings up our own darkness our own securities she mirrors that to us and she asks us to love ourselves anyway and I feel like for me, like the dark goddess is a goddess of initiation. She's a goddess that like when you work with her, she requires a sacrifice. And often like in my own experience, which I write about in the book, like I'll do some kind of really intense ritual with the dark goddess and then something really difficult will happen. And I always forget that when I'm at the gates of the underworld going to the dark goddess, she requires a sacrifice. And like I call it sacred amnesia because I think <laughs> that if we would remember the intensity and the pain of going through this darkness to honor this goddess like we wouldn't do it so she kind yeah. of like allows us to forget i also think that's really similar for people who bleed and have their like men's their periods because it's like every week i mean some people obviously have it worse and they have like actual like you know like um is it, what is it like pmds and stuff like yeah and really, like endometriosis really and stuff yeah, yeah this is that's totally different but like i do feel like that no matter what when you have your period like you're either going to be emotional or you're going to be cranky you're going to be hurting and it's like i'm just like cry all the time days before my period and i got really depressed and then i'm like why do i feel like absolute garbage and i'm like oh it's my period it's been yep. happening for like over 15 years and I still yeah. forget. I have that secret amnesia because if I remembered how much it sucked I would be spending the three other weeks of my month anticipating it um yeah 
absolutely that's so true (laughs) like it's kind of a gift like the sacred amnesia is kind of a gift because we keep showing up at the temples of the goddess we keep releasing in our body when we bleed and i do feel like the dark goddess for me gives me permission to own the parts of myself that feel taboo that feel um that feel like rebellious and especially like in this kind of patriarchal world like women are put in a very very small box like we literally are put in a small box we are taught to be skinny to be quiet to be submissive we're taught to not make too much noise we're taught to not ask for what we want like the world just wants us to shrink right like I really feel like that's kind of why and just pretend to be young and like hairless and not say anything and not have our own opinions and like the dark goddess is the antithesis of this. She is rageful. She is loud. She has an opinion. She is scary because I think like the the patriarchy at the end of the day to me is is terrified of like especially a sexually liberated woman or a woman who uses her voice. And sexual liberation to me is owning your sexuality in whatever facet that is, whether you're having a lot of sex or you're celibate or you're straight or you're aromantic or you're polyamorous. Like it just means owning your truth without like, you know, like if it's safe to obviously not, it's not safe for everybody, which is also like part of the reason we need the dark goddess. Cause she is a transformer. And I think for me, at the end of the day, what the dark goddess can teach us is that our shadow and the parts of ourselves that we reject and we wish are different are just as sacred as our light and just as necessary as our light. If we want to go to the heights of ecstasy, we need to be able to go to the depths of the underworld. And if we want to own all our lights and our angelic, our sweet, our loving heart open self, then we need to accept the part of ourselves that is rad- rageful or wrathful or jealous or sexual and the dark goddess is all of those parts. She honors her entire spectrum of emotions. And in doing so, when we honor her, like we honor ourselves. Um, I really think like what you were saying, we're made in the image of the divine. Like I, you know, there's this idea of as above, so below. And like, I really feel like we are embodiments of the divine in human form to have a human experience because the gods, the goddesses, the divine is numinous. It is not physical. It does not eat. Yeah. It does not fuck. It does not drink. It does not cry. So like us having a full, like we are the gods and goddesses incarnate to have full human experiences. And when we allow ourselves that gift to have a full range of human experience, like we're doing that for the divine and like that's part of like goddess energy, you know, it's like a frequency and it's a spectrum and it's not just one end of the spectrum. It's the whole spectrum. And the more that we can honor the pain and the fear and the rage as like sacred and as like part of the path and not in spite of it, like the more that we can not only honor the dark goddess, but embrace her and live as her. And I do think that our fear of the dark mother of the dark goddess is like, a patriarchal conditioning because like we yeah. don't have space to scream we don't have spaces to mourn we don't have spaces to be sexual we don't have these spaces to like be our shadow selves you know like in ceremony or in community like the way that we probably used to and i feel like the more that we can take up our full space and honor the dark goddess like the more that we can fight back against like the patriarchal conditioning that says we have to like be a certain way to be like women or non-binary or like whatever like exist absolutely i am um, I, I when i was when i was reading the chapter i i just thought of this um this experience that i had last year you know i i you know i tried to kill myself i ended up in the psych ward all of that and then for months after it's like well i am so happy that i am alive and like i'm gonna go to the therapy and everything and i'm like i kept saying like i'm happy to be alive i'm happy to be alive oh. and then all of a sudden i was like you know what I'm not actually that fucking happy. Like (laughs) I'm not actually okay. But as soon as I said that, yeah, I started to feel Mm. better. Like that was when I actually started to get better. (sighs) Yeah. And I was like, wow, that was like, I really, I didn't want to admit that no one wants to hear it. Right. Like not even therapists, they don't want to hear it because it's scary. And so I didn't want to hear it either. I didn't want to say it. And as soon as I did, I was like, oh my God. Like that feels so real. That feels yeah. a lot truer. Yeah. And uh, 
so when I was reading the chapter, I was like, I think that's, I think that was that moment, you know, um, mm. you say that the, the dark goddess wound when it's not healed or it's healing, it can like, it starts clawing at you, you know, it, it's yeah. going to find some way to come out. And uh, I was like, that was the the moment that I was like, okay, you're in there. <laughs> yeah, You're in there. And like, I, I'm cool with that. Like, I, yeah. I, I think this is a, I think, I think it's good that you're in there. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, I really feel that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, first off, thank you for sharing. I'm so happy that you're still here and still being a witch for the world. You're amazing. And I'm just so sorry you had to go through that, but so fucking proud of you. And I feel like that, yeah, like that surrender and that acknowledgement of where you are, it's like allowing the dark night of the soul to come through you so the dawn can come like absolutely i you know like i've experienced that recently too like i had somebody who was like telling me how stressed they were for work like really 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 just like so overall i'm so stressed like they admitted it and then the next day they got interviews and they started like getting jobs and it's like sometimes you just like need to be honest and like the universe yeah. is like i got you but yeah like you know, and also it's like the dark goddess does not spiritually bypass. She's not like, everything's yeah. fine. It's totally fine that this happened. She's like, that fucking sucked. And I wish I didn't fucking have to go through that. And like, I have to get the rage out. I have to feel it. Like, I have to sacrifice something. And like, it doesn't need to be taken out on anybody else, right? Like, you can burn a letter yeah. or you can scream or you can like dance or you can just, my favorite is Banshee screaming when I'm driving on the highway just like <laughs> that's so the best fun. highly recommend it um so it's like admitting it. yeah it's like you know our our world wants us to be like oh yeah you're fine now everything's good but actually everything's like, great it is like so much worse for your body so i'm so like i love that you're able to honor that and i'm i'm happier here and i hope that things are getting easier day by day because life hey. is are <laughs> i think they are they yeah. are definitely um i don't know like for those months before i was like i i'm actually not i'm not actually real psyched like dying was really my only plan and now i've got no plan b uh but you know since that moment i don't really i was like i'm sure there's i'm sure there actually is another plan out there like i yeah. like I, I think i can come up with something else and i didn't feel like that before so there's definitely yeah there's a level of empowerment there for sure yeah. oh i'm so happy to hear that and that's what i mean that you know what like that's the dark that's what the dark goddess is for like yeah. she is there when we're like in pain and like in those real moments that people like often turn their head away from like she can show up and um yeah i'm i'm glad that you're i'm glad that you're here and we're having this conversation yeah, me too. And I was, <laughs> and you know, I was just, I was really stricken after I read the chapter. I was like, wow, I just had like a, like, I just had like a very real experience. Like, I, <laughs> like, and it doesn't, it, it didn't matter if I was like, you know, following a specific goddess or not. Like I just mm -hmm. reading the chapter, I was like, I really feel like I really relate to this a lot. Yeah. So I, I thought that was, um, I thought that was really neat. Cause I've, I've rarely felt that about books where they're trying to, you know, explain to you how to work with deities specifically. Yeah. I feel like, um, not that worship is a, is a bad word, but I've always felt like there's this idea where you're like a servant in some mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And they're, I don't know, like it's it's something you have to, I don't know what it is. It, it's more like a, a very unequal thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but in the book I was reading it and it was more it's more like a like a relationship. Like exactly. it's it's less like I'm their employee of some yeah, kind. Literally, oh my god, capitalist deityness is like only serving your deity and getting nothing in return. Yeah. That's, yeah, no. It's a relationship. It's like a friendship. It's like it has to be two ways. Like you make time and space for your friend you listen to them but you also like receive something back and like yeah yeah like i totally see that like even if you weren't necessarily like honoring like worshiping a dark goddess like you know praying to her like you were the dark goddess you were embodying that energy and you were holding that within you even without like knowing it and you were allowing yourself to feel all the feelings and like the feeling of like actually like i'm still in this energy and like that's okay and I just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really touched that, 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 that spoke to you. And I feel like, 
yeah, she can be there for us. And it's like, even in the book I talk about, I'm like, yeah, you can work with faces of the goddess or you can just call upon like the great mother, the dark goddess, the goddess of love and like not use like one of her specific faces because she's yeah. still there. Like the goddess is here to comfort us. And it's like, just as we receive from the goddess, like they need our prayers and like they need our love, but like we also get something back. So I'm, I'm, it's not transactional. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. And actually to me, it's pretty disrespectful to just be like, Hey Venus, I need a hundred dollars. Please give it to me. Thanks. <laughs> Shitty. Like, yeah. And if I don't get it, I'm going to stop believing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and like the, like what you did intuitively of like being in that dark goddess energy is like such a it's so beautiful like you went through that initiation and the ordeal initiation that ordeal process and like now you get you come back from the underworld and you have a different perspective and like yeah i'm just i'm just honored that the book resonated with you especially after going through what you went through like truly yeah and every time you mentioned like every goddess story there's this there's this journey you know into the underworld and back up i'm like mm -hmm. hell yeah like i, <laughs> I mm -hmm. did that <laughs> oh, literally. i really did that i really did, did that that's so cool you did that i did that it was not <laughs> i don't i don't recommend it like they're doing it the way i did don't i don't recommend it but you know yeah. it's it's a thing that happened it's not i don't recommend it but it's a thing that happened so Paige, what are um, your you're a capricorn sun right yeah are you a Scorpio rising? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Of What's your moon in? Uh, Libra. Oh, oh my God. So we're kind of same, same, but different. I'm Aquarius sun, Scorpio moon, Libra rising. So both That's Saturnian so suns and a little bit different, but I mean, Scorpio people, Scorpio rising is like your literally like the path is death and rebirth so you yeah. are going through the underworld you're going through you know like you're a nana you've gone to the underworld you've come back and now you're queen of heaven earth and underworld so i see that for sure that's what i want i want to be that yeah. queen of everything <laughs> yeah you are yeah i actually um it, it, that was something else i liked about the book is this idea of embodying the goddess and, and becoming the goddess and like mm -hmm. I think that was, again, I think that's very different from a lot of the other ways that I used to read it, where it's, it's something that's separate from you. She's, yeah. she's a separate entity and, and, you know, you're just here to, to work for her. There's this yeah. idea in your book where you become the goddess. So yeah. what is that? What is, how can someone actually become, you know, this goddess that they are working with or that they need in their life? I feel like the first step is just deciding. It's just being like, I am like, again, about as above, so below. Like if I'm honoring the goddess, the goddess is honoring me. If I'm a part of her, she is a part of me. Like because the goddess is an energy, that's something that we can live in and that's something that we can access and that's something that we can embody. And what I mean by that is that we can remember that our feelings, our heart, our sexuality, our rage, all these parts of ourselves are sacred and it really starts with just like a, a shift in like the way we see ourselves, because if we recognize that we have the divine, if we have, if we recognize that we are goddess, if we recognize we have goddess energy within us, in my opinion, excuse me, it forces us to be more compassionate to ourselves. It forces us to look at ourselves with love and understanding in a way that we're usually not taught. And we usually don't, you know, hold for ourselves. Like, to me, embodying goddess energy means living in line with the divine within yourself and allowing that to be expressed, felt, and created in everything you do. Like, it is a way, like, just being like a witch, like, being a witch is a way to move through the world. Like, embracing the goddess within is a way to do that as well. And it's a really way to center our hearts, our bodies, and our souls in our life. And, like, there's different ways to do that. That might mean through prayer through moving our bodies through something like sex magic or dance or adornment through glamour and like the reason that this is important for me personally is because I feel like in a lot of the you know like western religions or like in a lot of kind of like patriarchal traditions like I grew up Jewish and it's interesting because like in Judaism, God is not gendered, but like Spanish, um, Hebrew has masculine and feminine like endings and words. Yeah. So even though God is not gendered, God is still masculine just by the way that we describe it. Um, but like in Christianity and some sects of Judaism, like, you know, like God is 
outside of us. God is something that we honor. And like, for me, it is so the opposite with goddess. Like goddess is not thought she, like, you can't think your way to her. She's not something outside of yourself. Like, yeah, you can worship different faces of the goddess, but they represent things that you have within yourselves that are awakened. Like when you honor the goddess of love, you are awakening that those seeds within yourself. You are nurturing that part of yourself. You're nurturing your heart and your sensuality. Like she's not just outside of you. She is an embodied experience. And like it, it, it starts with the mind, like the mindset. And then I think that it's something that can only be experienced when you're like, it, it's, it, you have to experience it for yourself, but like, it can be really simple as just like honoring yourself, like thinking of yourself, like, okay, if I was like a goddess back in the day, if I had a temple where people came to worship me, who would they worship me as? Like, what would I be the goddess of? And what would the yeah. offerings be? And how can I honor myself as that, right? So like for me, like I would want to be Gabriella, goddess of like glamour, magic and sexuality or something. And I feel like people would bring me like red roses and joints and red lipstick and um, pleasers and coffee right so like when i okay like awesome. i have that so i'm like those are the offerings i can bring myself and people would worship me through what like through dance or like would like bathe my statues so like i know that i can take like a bath with some like you know epsom salt or i can like you know that's obviously like self-care i think self-care is a part of this because yeah the goddess is like it's not selfish. Like, I think, you know, like we, I know that you understand this. I know your listeners get it. Like self-care like has been monetized, patriarchalized. I don't know if that's a word, but it should be like, it should been, be <laughs> right. Like sold to us, but, but we like to be in community, to be caring for the world, to be showing up for our, our life and our jobs. Like we need to fill our own cups. And like, for me, that means going to therapy and taking my Lexapro and meditating and working out as much as it means doing face masks and taking baths and tapping. But like, it means different, something different to everybody. But if you honor yourself as a goddess, like it means worshiping yourself as the source of love, light, and the gift that you are to this world. Every goddess has her own story and everybody is unique. Like there is nobody that's you and that is a gift. And the more you foster that and foster that creativity and art and love, like the more you're going to be connected to goddess energy. And honestly, I wrote most of goddess energy in 2020 and then revisited like a year ago when I was like finishing the manuscript. I don't even know what I wrote in there is kind of, I feel like you <laughs> probably get this. It's like you literally, like, I had to reread that book like a million times between yeah. writing it, editing it, copy editing it, line editing it. And then like the book is like leaves my brain forever. Like I feel like I write it, I research it, I live it. And then I'm like, I don't even know what's in this book. So yeah, I that's really so real. You, like <laughs> I know there's like embodiment in there and there's dancing and there's glamour and there's like, things like affirmations and journaling and tarot, which like helps you be in tune with your own center. Those are all things that are going to help you embody goddess energy because goddess energy is unique and it's different to everybody. Just like witchcraft is going to be different for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was, um, that was definitely really clear throughout the book is like, you need to explore this for yourself. Here's some things that I do. Here's some things that you can try, but yeah. ultimately it's going to be, it's going to be different for you than it is for me. Yeah. And I really like that. I, I think it left it very open and very um, accessible to a lot of different yeah. people. That's super, super, super important to me. Cause like, I don't like when I read a witch book and I need a million things and I have to do stuff a certain way. Like, I really like when I, I, I just know that for me, like when I write spells and rituals, I do be, I'm very detailed just because I do want to help people. But like, yeah. I'm always like adapt as you want. Like your magic is going to be the strongest. Your goddess worship, your witchcraft is going to be the strongest when it is yours. And like, I, even though I'm quote unquote, like an authority or like a teacher, like <laughs> I am not like, I'm a student first. I'm somebody who like, I know that what works for me is not going to work for me, for you necessarily. But I also recognize that having examples that are, have worked for somebody is really helpful. So it's like, it's really it's kind helpful. of a mix, you know, like I, I just more than anything, it's really important for my work to be accessible to all kinds of different people. And, um, I want it to be something that you take and make your own. So it feels good. Like it shouldn't feel 
bad. It shouldn't feel like something else. Like it shouldn't feel like a job that you don't want to do because your boss is forcing you to do it. You know, like this should right. be something that, like makes you feel good and connects you to your heart and connects you to the universe and gives you like more purpose and meaning. So, you know, the goddess isn't for everybody, but I do think that if we want balance between like the, if we want to swing the other way of the patriarchy and find balance between like masculine and feminine and men and women and everybody in between, like we need to swing the pendulum to goddess energy and then we'll find the balance. So it's like, I'm not writing this book to be like, women are better than men and you should go <laughs> and only worship women and like put men in their place. And matriarchy is not that. Matriarchy is not a triangle where women are at the top. The top. Matriarchy is a circle where all living life is supported, encouraged and valued. And that is so antith antithetical to like the patriarchy. So it's like, yeah, I'm just it's important for me that people can access that in whatever way feels good for them. Yeah. Power with, not power exactly. over. <laughs> it's like my new favorite thing. It's power with, not power over. Yeah. <laughs> so I wa another thing I wanted to, t I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, love and sex magic. Cause that's yeah. your, that that's you. That's your, that's yeah. your entire thing. That's your practice. Yeah. And um, sacred sex. Oh gosh. I don't even remember when it came out now. in the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the last few years. I think 2022. I don't even know. These last few years are all just one year. It's very, I know, right? It's just like that. <laughs> um, but I, I, again, I think um, your presentation of, of love and sex magic is also very open. You know, you and I are very different in terms of, of sex and love where we mm. go in different directions. But mm. I, I still feel like it's very relatable. Yeah. How did you how did you come to be um, so aligned with love magic specifically like is that where witchcraft started for you is with love magic and, and love goddesses oh actually you know what no it's not because i okay so i started practicing witchcraft when i was like 12 or 13 and for me actually like my practice with witchcraft started with the goddess like i found witchcraft and found the goddess at the same time and i like for me those two things are very related though i know that's not the case for a lot of people but like when yeah. i was like i my first book was like either t I think it was Teen Witch by Silver Ravenwolf. And then I read the to ride a silver broomstick. And she talked about the divine feminine and Bast and the moon. So I was like, oh, Bast. And like, I remember getting like a book on goddesses when I was 12 and like at like Jewish sleepaway camp. And I was like, I'm pagan. I'm a witch. That's that. My parents were like, LOL. But, you know, 15, 17 years later, here I am doing the same thing <laughs> for a living. Um, so actually, like my path like i was really obsessed with finding my matron goddess back then i was like wiccan so i was like oh, i need a matron goddess and i wasn't really worried about a patron god because i was like not really ready for the energy and i had the same way i, I never and, i was like oh i don't need that that's fine same. and you know what like i've i still like i'll work with different gods but like i have just accepted like my path is the goddess path like i practice the really the goddess religion like that is who I show up for. And like, I love the masculine, but I worship the masculine through the feminine. Like I worship yeah. the divine masculine through the divine feminine, um, whatever. But I had, I was asking the goddess to come to me in my dreams. And I was like 13 at this time. I hadn't even gotten my period. I was still prepubescent and Aphrodite showed herself to me. And I remember Ooh. being so scared. I was like, nope, I'm not ready for this. I'm not sexual. I like hadn't even had my first kiss. Yeah. I was like, I hid it away. I literally hid it away. And I forgot that she came to me until I was like 21 or 22. And then I was like, somehow Venus came into my life. I think like maybe it was Alexander Rock. So, or somebody was working with her and I was like, Ooh, interesting. And like felt that pull and pretty quickly was like, okay, I'm a Venus girl, you know, like I devoted myself to her and then remembered the dream that I had. But for me, like I came to like love and sex magic, I think through glamour, I was writing a lot of like blog posts on my then fashion blog, Breathing Fashion, RIP, on like <laughs> outfits inspired by tarot cards. And I started realizing that like I could honor my magic and my sexuality through like lingerie. And eventually I found Venus and it was just like something clicked. I discovered like I started exploring um, BDSM and kink at the same time and was involved with somebody and we quickly like were not involved but he was like the one partner I had who was like actually kinky and had a dom and I 
quickly realized that I like when we start stopped seeing each other that I was gonna have to like become my own lover express my sexuality in like my own way and like explore kink by myself and I de- yeah. I dedicated that to Venus and started working with her and through that like through the past almost 10 years probably eight or nine years like I've devoted myself to different goddesses of love and just like really realized that like that was a central focus of like my magic like being a devotee to the goddess of love and her different faces and I have specific faces of the goddess I'm devoted to like Venus Babylon and um Isis or Aset are the three goddesses that like I I are my matron goddesses and like realizing I could be devoted to more than one goddess for me was like such a life changer like I had that like wicked indoct- indoctrination that you could only have like one goddess that you're pledged to yeah. and <laughs> during COVID like 2020 I was like wait no like I could be dedicated to like more than one goddess and like that is really when I realized that the goddess of love like that current Anana, Ishtar, Babylon, Venus, Isis, Hathor, um, Kudukula, like white, even like white Tara, like these expressions, white Tara a little bit different, but like still these goddesses of like love, um, specifically the current starting with Anana, Ishtar and like going to, you know, all these different expressions of the divine feminine, like that was like where my heart was. And in turn, like that became the goddess is always a central pillar of like my life and my devotion, but like that really kind of centered that. And for me, like that happened around the time I started exploring kink. And then a few years later, I started doing sex work and like started kind of embracing the goddess as a part of that. And like, since then it's really kind of like become like the central part of my life and my work. And, um, yeah, I think for me, like kink and sex work and goddess devotion are all really related. And it's only something yeah. I've like recently kind of started talking about as far as sex work goes, just because of, you know, stigma and stuff. It's still, yeah. like, just and because of the world. Of, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's still criminalized. And also like I am a skinny, white, cis, able-bodied woman. Like I, I, it does not need to be about me, but like, I do recognize yeah. that like I have, you know, like I'm, I'm really passionate about like decrim and stuff. And for me, like those things are related to my worship of the goddess and like the women back in the day who were honoring her through sexual ritual. And um, yeah, it's just like something that feeds into all my work and even feeds into like how I dress and how I express myself. And um, love magic to me is more about living in goddess energy, really living in a place of love and heart openness and honoring myself as a vessel of love and like, just like I think that becoming a goddess is like becoming the goddess by embracing yourself as divine, seeing yourself as divine, and then honoring her as or like her different faces as a reflection of you and de- different parts of yourself and different parts of your totality. Like I see that the same thing with love magic, where it's like the strongest love spell you can cast on yourself is to be is it's to cast on yourself is to be an embodiment of love and to be love incarnate and to live from that place. So um yeah, I don't know if I answered your question, but I hope I did. <laughs> you did. And and I think um I, I think that's good. I I think a lot of people when they hear love magic or love spell, they think of one thing, which is mm-hmm. trying to attract, you know, a partner. They're trying to attract mm-hmm. someone else to share their love with or to show love to them or yeah. to, to share sexuality with or whatever, which is like, you know, that's obviously part of it. And yeah, that's great. And there's nothing wrong with it. But like there there's a lot more to love magic with that like what other kinds of spells and and rituals does someone devoted to love do besides just trying to attract a partner yeah well i feel like you know like spells and rituals for me are similar different like a ritual might be for me like taking a really really long bath with like my epsom salts and my rose petals and like turning my phone on silent and putting music on and like closing my eyes maybe using my vibrator and doing some like sex magic like for me that working with my sexual energy whether that's through dancing movement masturbation or sex and like feeling that in my body and dedicating it to a specific purpose when I orgasm or when you get as close as you can to orgasm is like a big part of my magic so like for me like I'll dedicate my orgasms to like the goddess or I'll move them through my body or I'll 
like have an intention in my mind, like, or I'll just enjoy the pleasure that comes from it as an offering to myself. Like working with my sexual energy as an energy is a big part of love magic. Um, but it's also like, it can be something like dressing up in an outfit that corresponds to like whatever is going on astrologically to make me feel beautiful and like an embodiment of love. It can mean lighting candles to my goddesses and meditating with my heart. Like one of my all-time favorite, excuse me, meditations is visualizing a rose in my heart. And as I breathe and an inhale, it expands and blooms. And as I exhale, it like curls its petals and closes. And it's just this like in and out and like it doesn't have to be spells like for me meditation and visualization are such a good way to practice this kind of magic either by embracing our hearts asking our hearts what's going on breathing in you know pink light pink glittery light into our bodies for love speaking affirmations of self-love in the mirror or you know working with the full moon and meditating on the lover's card or on the energy that I want to embody to attract love. Like, obviously you can use it for partners. You can use it for sex. But again, like, I feel like becoming love and honoring those qualities that you want in yourself is like a really powerful way to work through, you know, like to do love magic. Um, yeah. For me, like when I was really trying to honor the divine masculine and call in divine masculine energy into my life, like every day I would list out like, five ways that I already had, like I was already in tune with my masculine energy and five ways that masculine energy was like already present in my life. So like whether it was like, oh, well, like I'm really good at like structure. I'm like really, you know, like I take care of my shit. I work out like I'm really like whatever it is. And like, okay, like my dad is an example of the divine masculine or my friend Corey, who's like gay is a really great example. Or like my friend Dane, who's like been my best friend since I was little, like there's yeah. different ways to do it. And that way it's not just like yearning for something outside of yourself. It's also coming back to the way it already shows up in your life. But I mean, like, I feel like it's just like being like a living, walking Valentine. And like, for me, that means like, <laughs> I love wearing, that. <laughs> right. Like being wearing pink and wearing red lipstick and like wearing things that make me feel sexy. But it's also just like allowing myself to be cheesy and romantic and cute, like watching rom-coms or like reading love stories or like, flirting and kissing you know like there's just even like dating can be a, a part of like a love magic practice like dating yeah is a way for you to see where you are because when you're dating somebody or you're going on first dates like your partners are mirrors to where you are and like when you show up with more clarity you're going to get partners who inevitably do so as well so I think, again, it's like expanding this idea from just spells and rituals to the way that you move through your life with that intention in your heart and mind. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I, man, I love Valentine's Day. <laughs> I think right. it's because I, I like, I like the cheesy stuff. I like the fun stuff. And I love, I love like physically giving people little like paper Valentines, like the that kinds so that you would bring to school God, because yeah. it makes people smile and Literally. laugh. Literally. Like it, it just puts a smile on everyone's face. No one's mad that they got a, like a Hello Kitty Valentine or something like that. Like, right. And it's I just, uh, I think love energy is kind of, it's, um, I think people, I think they attribute a little bit too much heaviness to it all the time or like a, yeah. like a pressure when yeah. it comes to love. I think, I think, um, I think it's hard for people to see other kinds of love that are not just like getting married and having exactly. kids. And <laughs> Literally like I, I mean, for up until I was 28, like I'd never had a boyfriend, never been in love, had dated, but like not ever been in anything like really serious, like never again, never had a boyfriend. And I was like so annoyed and I'm still annoyed because like I feel like the U.S. really is like if you're not in a committed relationship with somebody else, then you're you're valueless. You're a loser. Don't care about you. You're a loser. Yeah. And like uh, you don't have a Valentine. What's wrong with you? And like 
I still like even though my boyfriend was my Valentine and we spent Valentine's Day night together I was like I love Valentine's Day even though I've never like up until him like I never had like a Valentine like I still love it because like my friends are my Valentine's I'm my own Valentine it's an energy of love like I love that it's cheesy I love that Hallmark kind of like made it up even yeah. though Looper Kelly Kelly is a thing but like I feel like that's what I kind of was talking about in sacred sex. I'm like, love is so much more expansive than just like being in a relationship. Like it's yeah. how you treat yourself. It's your relationship like with your friends. It's your relationship with yourself with like, it's your, like the love you have for your pets, your families, your community. Like just saying that love is one thing is dismissive of the expansiveness of love and of like the different kinds of relationships and sexuality and like, partnerships that exist so and like yeah. I feel like part of the reason I hadn't had a boyfriend up until now was because like the monogamous relationship escalator never spoke to me like I was like I don't want to move in with somebody and like not until I'm like engaged like I don't want to yeah. meet somebody's oh family God. right away like I don't want to like get married and have kids and like have like the white picket fence like I've always known I wanted to be married but I'm like I don't I want to be a slut for the rest of my life and like I just want to keep getting slutier I don't want to live a life that like children can be a part of like I don't want to live yeah. a life where, like that would make sense my boyfriend and I are non-monogamous he was he's married and like you know like I feel like that it's been incredible because like I don't want to move in with him like I love my living situation I love having my own space like I don't really feel the need to like meet his parents or like have him meet mine like that'll happen eventually yeah. but it's like for me like just being in love and allowing it to grow without like this pressure to like to move a certain way right to get married and to, to move hit in together. Milestones. it's just like it's not necessary like I have never had such a safe relationship i've never felt so loved i've never felt so appreciated like he's like this like the person i've been calling in and because like i gotta like still do sex work and i still gotta like be myself and like hook up with other people if i want like flirt and like go on dates and like i'm not one to jump into relationships obviously so like i don't have another boyfriend but like i would love one because like more the merrier but like he's just raised the bar so high i'm like good luck um <laughs> like that space and that freedom to like be my full self and that for that to be celebrated and for, to not be like pressured into like this very s slim expression of love that society places on me has like allowed me to be in this like really committed loyal relationship for almost two years and it's just like I don't know I just like I have qualms with society and the patriarchy and the relationship escalator because I'm like it is it is not healthy like it's just not yeah I don't know. it doesn't work, it doesn't work for, for everybody, everybody and that's okay I love your podcast. Oh my god! I'm you. loving love, lust, and magic. This is it was it was so great. I love the guests that you have on. What what made you decide to start a podcast? Okay, well, first off, I would love to have you on as a guest. Like, I would, I would love, love that. Love to have you on as guest. We will arrange. I will email. Um, so thank you for all these compliments. I have wanted to start a podcast for a long time, but like I have been from like 2020 to like 20 like for like the past. I don't know, even longer. Like for a long time, I was just like writing books nonstop. And I was like writing multiple books at once. So I just like did not have the time, space or mental bandwidth. Yeah. And I knew that I wanted to start a podcast because I'm an air sign and I love talking and I could talk forever. And just because like I knew that it was like a way to like honestly like grow my audience. But more than anything, like I have like besides like I don't really have anything right now that's like really free for people like I have a shit yeah. ton of articles out like if you like I have I have written thousands of articles for so many different magazines that you could go and find but like you know books like obviously like please ask your local library to buy your, my books I do not care if you get them from the library In fact, yeah. I would love it if you get it from the library because libraries are like my happy place I need to go more we love a library but like besides that like I do recognize that there is like for most of my stuff whether it's patreon or like my books or my ritual guides like there is a you know like a payment like a paywall you have to pay which is important because yeah. I need to make money <laughs> gotta pay but the rent I, I, yeah exactly like I but I wanted to do something that was accessible for people that um, I could interview people because like over the years I've been lucky enough to like get to know so many incredible witches sex witches artists creators like 
And I just have like, I'm lucky enough to have this like really extensive network of people who like I've been on their podcast and I've interviewed them for pieces or they've interviewed me. And I just decided last year, I was like, okay, 2023, I am not going to write any books and I'm going to focus on podcasting and do like sex work. Like literally it was like, I'm going to take a break. My brain cannot handle writing any more books. I will literally explode and I want to start a podcast. So I knew right away that the things that I was really going to dive into were the things that I'm obsessed with, which is witchcraft, sexuality, and the goddess. Like I knew that those were going to be the kind of things that we would get into in the podcast, among other stuff. So yeah. like I just realized that Love, Lust, and Magic was, I just think it sounds really cute. And I it had does. my friend, um, Ify Fwa Graphics, do the art because I love her and like I feel like when those things came together and I found my producer, like it just kind of like it was really easy, like and not easy. It's a lot of work. It's a lot. Of it's work. a lot of work, it's but no, it. Fun. I know but what you was, mean. <laughs> yeah, like I just like love doing it, and I like started interviewing people and like emailing people in Gemini season, um, which felt really natural because I just felt like really creative and really inspired. Been I'd interviewed people since then, and then. I just like really wanted to wait for everything to be right. Like the the music, the album art, everything. And then I launched it in November and it's just been so fun. It's just like, it is a lot of work as you get like, but I love it. Like I come from um, a journalism background. So like, I like, cool. feel like I know how to interview people kind of like I, I, it's a balance between like, I'm always going to be prepared with like my opening paragraph, all my questions, but like, I like to let the, it's like how you like you like let me you know like you have questions but you're also like letting the conversation flow and you ask your questions based on my answers like I just like you know like we I figured out a system that works and it's been really fun and like I really enjoy it I really enjoy talking and I really enjoy like it was just really important for me to offer something to people that was different and also that just like supports my work because I <sighs> I am learning to not be resentful. I'm trying to not be resentful. I just don't at, like the fact that I have to be like my own marketing person for all my stuff. Like I really don't oh my God. like being a salesperson. I don't I like hate it. Push, I hate it. I don't like being like, buy this, buy this, buy this. Cause like I'm lucky enough where I have, I have my sixth book coming out. Like we have a lot of stuff to promote and like I have an essay series. I have a podcast. I have classes I teach. Like I constantly have shit to push and like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I yeah. just want to create. I just want to do my own thing. Like I don't like having to post on Instagram and like, I'm not at a place right now where I prioritize hiring somebody to help me. So it's like, I'm doing it myself, even though my team Tartar Perigee is amazing. Like, and my podcast producer is amazing. Like I'm still, I still have to post about stuff that's even unrelated to book stuff. And like, I think with the podcast too, it was like, wait, I can do solo episodes based on my books, based on what I'm interested in. I can plug things. And more than that, like I can give like my platform to people whose work I admire and I support. And that's more than just like white men in occultism and witchcraft, which I yep. love white men in occultism <laughs> and witchcraft. But like, it's so important to me to interview more people than that to interview sex workers and artists and you know like other people so like I've had like my friend who's one of my best friends is like a mental health writer and I interviewed Gabriella Rosie who's an artist and um there's just Kelsey like different Wolf. kinds of people and I just yeah it's definitely made me get over listening to myself which is kind of nice so I think that's what's so cool about podcasts is like reading someone's book and hearing their voice sometimes are it can be really different you know you, yeah. you picture what someone might sound like but yeah I feel like hearing someone's voice I'm like this somehow provides a lot of context definitely for their books when I when yeah. I when I know how they sound when I know how they you know make little jokes when I you know know what words they use all the time like yeah. it, I think it's I think it's great to do both. Also, yeah. podcasting gives you like an excuse to like research stuff and learn really? new things and talk to people. And I feel like it, um, like on your show, I feel like you just explore so many different things. And it, yeah. I imagine that that, you know, over time, that's just going to grow and grow and grow. Thank you, babe. Yeah, it's been it's been really fun. And um, yeah, it's really intimate to like hear somebody and hear somebody talk about the things that they're like 
passionate about. And I feel like I can talk about things on my podcast. Like I can't talk about my book. There's something really, really special about yeah. um, getting to talk out loud yeah. about this, ab- about witchcraft, about, about magic, you know, especially yeah. um, it can be hard to talk about it with, you know, just random people. Like you're yep. just, just your friends. Sometimes there's just not a great audience to talk yeah. about magic yeah. around other people. And so, you know, podcasting is a way to, to wait, a way to get that out. <laughs> and I feel like I'm learning from my guests all the time. And oh, yeah. I like, I love it. I feel like too part of like, for me, like being like synchronicities are a reminder that like I'm on the right path. And like so often mm-hmm. somebody on my podcast will like reflect something that I've been feeling or I've been like stewing over. Like they'll just express this thing that I didn't have the words for. And like, that's such an, an act of like magic and such a gift. Like I, I love it. So it's like, I'll, I love, you know, like being I'm I'm not I'm always trying to grow and do better so it's just like hearing people express things in maybe a different way than I would have thought it's just so special and it's so sacred and it's been like it's really been such a gift that people have resonated with the podcast I love writing like I have said this before and I it's dramatic but it's true like I would not survive if I couldn't write like if I wasn't able to write things I think I would my soul would die like I need it and I love it (laughs) Exactly. But writing is such, um, it's not like isolating necessarily, but it's such a solitary thing. Like I, even if I'm at a coffee shop, I'm in my own world. Like when I'm really writing my book, like I'm alone, I'm alone researching, I'm alone writing it. Like, and podcasting is the opposite. It's communal, you know, like, yeah, I record solo episodes, but like, I really wanted the majority of my episodes to be interviews. And it's just, especially post not post COVID because we're still in it but like (laughs) especially in this kind of era of like I you know I wear masks and stuff but I still see people like it's so nice to have that connection even if it's like virtual like it just it makes me really happy so thank you for the support that's awesome yeah I'm um I'm I'm so glad it's out there I'm I'm really loving it I'm really I'm really enjoying it I really like it I love all your guests so far they've been really really cool Thank you, my love. Yeah, I'm trying to just have like different people, you know, like I'm it's they're been... all different. It's yeah. been great. Thank you. It's been really fun. Uh, I think that was like I'm looking at my my little like haphazard notes. I think that was all of the questions and like specific stuff I had for you. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about or that you wanted to share about any of your projects or anything like that? So if you order the book before the day it comes out, I'm going to see if we can keep this through like the first week the book is out, but you got a bonus uh, PDF. So if you pre-order, you got a beautifully illustrated, gorgeous PDF that has exclusive affirmations, journal questions, and a tarot spread. The tarot spread is in the shape of a heart. I think it's really cute. And it's all about connecting to the goddess, goddess energy, awakening that within you. And it's none of the affirmations, the journal questions, or the tarot spread are found anywhere else. So that's just Very a little cool. freebie. So um, you can go to like my Instagram, my link tree. We'll have the link um, to the bonus PDF. And that's available to anybody who pre-orders it. I'm always like putting out new classes. So by the time this comes out, I'll have my creating a daily practice class in my store, in my shop, um, and classes like perverting the tarot and um, awesome. self seduction, which is a class about solo kink and like all of that stuff is on my website and um, goddess energy will be out on the spring equinox. I'm so grateful to be here and so grateful for your support, your beautiful questions and your magic. It is so needed and i'm so glad you're sharing it with the world oh thanks i'm really i'm really excited that we we got some time to talk it's always a pleasure to have you on here and i'm i'm just such a big i'm a big fan i'm a big fan of everything that you do and all of your books so i'm i'm really excited to um you know to have the podcast that i can follow and then to have a new book coming out i'm just i'm just really pumped to see so much from you 